Hello there, welcome on in. In this video, we're going to be building a sim racing PC for under £1,200, including shipping. We're going to run through each component, talking about our decision making, run through pretty much everything. So let's get started. First of all, tried and tested. We're going to be using PC Part Picker. Uh, it really comes in helpful. You can change the country and region to, for stores where you live. So let's start the build. Okay, we're just going to run through fill this list and I'm going to be talking through um, all the decisions I make on each part. First up, CPU. Okay, obviously it opens up with 1,300 compatible products, obviously, because this is our first component. So first things first, we're going to go to our micro architectures. We're going to go for Zen 3, 4, Order Lake, which is 12th generation, Raptor Lake, which is 13th, Raptor Lake Refresh 14th, and Rocket Lake was 11th gen. These are actually a good mix, and that'll help filter some of them down. All right, next thing we're going to look at is the core count. Let's bring this to 12 as a nice minimum. We're going to still have plenty of choice. Let's bring the maximum down just to get rid of some of these. What about price? Okay, perfect. We've already got some good hits already. Um, the first one of interest is this uh, i7-12700KF. K denoting overclockable, F denoting no onboard GPU, which is going to be fine because we're going to be getting a graphics card. There isn't much of a price difference between these two if you did want an onboard GPU. Uh, but it's not something to concern yourself with. 1350, 14 core. Ryzen 9, 5900X, 243. i7 with an F. Yeah, we're going to go with the i7-12700KF. Let me just quickly show you the product. Uh, you can see all the stores, but obviously it's just grabbing the cheapest price for us. Performance boost clock of 5 gigahertz. Core clock of 3.6, but it's overclockable. And we're going to get ourselves a cooler that's going to allow us to get some more headroom out of it. So let's get that added. Okay, up next is the CPU cooler. Now, while this probably would come with a stock cooler, we're not going to use it. There's no point buying a K processor if we're not going to be able to uh, push the limits on it. I and mean, this is all safe and so much easier than it used to be to overclock. CPU coolers. Let's have a quick look what we can limit it by. There's not a lot. First of all, let's just go by price and see what we've got. We're going to limit by a couple of companies. Let's have a look. Cooler Master, Corsair, Deepcool, NZXT. Who else we got? I don't want to miss someone. Be quiet. EVGA. Mm -mm -mm. Noctua, one of the best companies. Perfect. Okay, let's have a look. So we got some deep calls. Uh, it doesn't look like we've got many AIOs at this price. The one standing out here for me is this, the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2. It's a, it is an air cooler, but these things are chonky they do a brilliant job of dissipating heat at while keeping your pc cool um this version unlike its predecessors is not gonna you don't have to worry about blocking your ram i run these in a few of the systems i do have aios in my systems and while they are good these can be noticeable quieter and their performance is rock solid so yeah we're gonna go for 36 pound for the be quiet pure rock 2 motherboard okay so Obviously, we've got 528 compatible with our system so far. The first thing we are going to limit by is the chipset. We're going to go with the Z690. It's going to give us some really good options. We want DDR5 compatibility for this build. We want at least four slots. And let's get ourselves at least two M2 slots. Perfect. Okay, so we're not really going to worry about Wi-Fi with this build. Order by price, and what have we got here? So I think the biggest difference here, apart from the form factor there with this one, we'll go with ATX on our form factor. Uh, the biggest difference here is gonna be the uh, maximum RAM capabilities. So if we click on this one and scroll down, we can see LGA 1700, um, max memory size is way above what we're probably gonna need, DDR5, and then here we have the memory speeds. So this is gonna be a big decision for you. Uh, so this goes up to 4800 or up to 5800. The more expensive models, if we went down to, say, the Tomahawk, as you can see, we can go up to 6400, so we get access to two more uh, RAM speeds. But it's really dependent upon what you're going to end up buying. For this build, this uh, motherboard is perfectly adequate for us, and 5800 is going to be a, a good target for us to be uh, shopping RAM at for a good price. But that being said, Make sure you get enough RAM to cover your own build. 
Let's go for the uh, ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming 4. Perfect. Memory on that subject. So we're going to load up with 1,500 compatible products. This bit's a bit difficult. So let's just run through. The first thing I'm going to look for here is the first word latency. This is literally, think of it as the response time. Cast latency, this is the difference between the uh, when the memory is read and when it's available. So let's go and limit those first. First up, the first word latency. We can see there's a lot of numbers here. Perfect. And on the cast latency, let's get rid of all these 30s. We want sub 30. Let's do 28. Okay, that still leaves us with 21 products. And on the size, i.e. the memory size, here. Uh, let's, for this build, let's go with two sticks of 16 gig. Okay, and we can see we've been given the G-Skill Ripjaws S532 gig, two sticks of 16 gig, DDR5 5600, as we know that falls with inside our spec on our motherboard, uh, 10 and 28, nice fast RAM. Let's get that added to our build. If you want more memory or faster memory, make sure you add that here. If you're going to go above the limit of the motherboard that we picked, which I think was 5800, then you're going to need a different motherboard. So, so far we've got the i7-12700KF, overclockable and no onboard GPU. The Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 CPU Cool Air Tower Cooler. The ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard. And two 16 gig um, sticks of DDR5 5600 RAM. Storage up next, 5,278 products. Right, let's start limiting. First things first, capacity. I'm going to say nowadays, value for money, let's put it at half a terabyte. We're going to be using this drive for our OS and any games that you use frequently. Uh, we want to be using the M2 form factor, 2280. Let's make sure it's using PCI, PCIe and cache. Cache is going to be the big one that I don't want you to miss out on. Just give it one click. Just one click of cache. Okay, this gets this just makes sure we're using a M2 that has um, onboard cache, which uh, can really help performance. Um, perfect. So have a quick read. So yeah, the Crucial P5 Plus. Crucial is a great brand. We could have filtered some of the brands because there's certainly some brands I wouldn't buy storage from. But it looks like because of the cache, we've filtered down some nice ones. I do usually use the Samsungs there. Um... But this is such a good deal, I can't pass it up. Let's have a quick look at it. So I'm not sure if any of you use them too. Very easy to fit. Little bolt goes here, clicks in, just connects to the motherboard with no wires. Okay, let's get that added. Okay, we've got the processor, the cooler, the motherboard, the RAM, the storage. Up next, probably quite an important one for a gaming PC, and that's gonna be a video card. Now, this was a difficult one. Obviously, there's a lot of choice and your mileage may vary. So let's do some limiting. So what GPU? Now I was racking my brain because we want good performance, good price. And I balanced somewhere between the 4060 Ti and the 4070 until I found the 4060 Ti 16 gig variant. Okay, so let's limit the memory to 12 to get rid of, well, 10 is fine, to get rid of all the 8 gig variants of the 4060 Ti. So we're getting the 16 gig variant. The only other thing to make sure would be the type of ports you're going to be using, just to check it's compatible with your monitors. Obviously, you can get adapters, but it's not the best place to start. So let's have a look at what we've got in our price range. So we have, the other thing to look for now is if we can get hold of a triple fan rather than the dual, just to help with cooling. And this bad boy, pre-overclocked, let's have a look. So it's a 4060 Ti with 16 gig of onboard GDR6 memory. Um, it has been pre-overclocked, so that removes people that are worried um, about doing it themselves. I think this is a fantastic price to performance card. Now, obviously you can step it up. This is a big decision to make, but the PC we're building is future-proof to allow you to to uh, ramp up the GPU, we'll make sure the uh, power supply is strong enough to cope with an upgraded GPU. So this is a what, 459? If we scroll on down until we get to a 4070, we're at 523 for a dual. 
an Azrock Strick. That's a 4060, 46, 4070 dual fan, 4070, 4070. This is a good one. 557 for a 12 gig um, 4070. Whereas we are going with. So, yeah, I mean, the price is still sizable, but this is up to you. This Your mileage is going to vary. Your decisions are going to come into it. But let's get this PC built. Okay, so we went with the 4060 Ti 16 gig variant. This is this covers all our bases. This is going to be great for sim racing, great to handle in the uh, triple monitors or fourth monitor or even streaming while you're racing. So I think it's a great choice. Case. Now... Obviously, we have unlimited cases, unlimited choices, and our prices seem to go from 40 quid up. There's a couple of companies I do like the design of. Uh, Fractal, Corsair, Leon Lee are some of my favorites. But I think the, the case that took the biscuit, even if uh, we went through more manufacturers, is the Corsair 3000D Airflow. I think it's clean, tempered glass. We can see, if you look closely, there are... Um, fan accessibles at the front so we can pull airflow from front to back rather than the front being a sealed entrance uh, i think it's clean i mean if you want to rgb the insides go for it but i think this case for 59.99 is uh i think it's fantastic tempered glass black with front to rear and upwards airflow i, I say i'm not a huge fan of say this this type of design where the front is completely blocked in which is it's getting more and more popular with our sim racing machines being on all the time, they just get hot. So the winner for this build is the Corsair 3000D. Let's get that added. All we've got left is a power supply. Uh, it's given us an estimated wattage of 474. We want some overhead, much a lot of overhead, and the uh, option for a future proofing our build as we grow. So power supply. Uh, we're going to make it sure it's at least a gold spec and up. We're going to make sure it's at least 800 watts and up. We are going to go for full modularity, which means any unused connectors can be removed, which is uh, very nice for keeping it tidy. ATX. Now, I'm not just going to go with any brand for this. Obviously, we can limit the price a little bit, but that's not, got, not too much going to matter. Uh, never heard of Game Max. I've definitely heard of Gigabyte, and that's an 850 Gold Plus full modular. Uh, there's a Cooler Master 850, but no, we're going to go with the Gigabyte 850 GM. That gives us plenty of headroom on the build. It's Gold Plus certified, full modularity. Perfect. Let's get that added. Okay, that brings our build cost to 1144.15 with shipping. We have full compatibility nice bright green bar let's just give a quick run through so we've got a 12 core i7 12700 kf overclockable um maybe one day i'll do a video on um overclocking and run you through some how to's in a sort of simple sort of way but i do implore you to watch a few youtube videos and get that done because it's very easy nowadays the be quiet pure rock 2 cpu cooler is it aio no is it rgb no is it cool and quiet Yes. Motherboard. Uh, we went with a good motherboard here to cover all the bases because obviously um, with a sim racing PC running so many USB compliant devices, the speed of the RAM requirement, we went with a good board here as Rock makes some fantastic boards. We went with 32 gig of RAM, two 16 gigs slots, or so DDR5 5600 RAM with a good CAS and first word latencies. Storage, we went with the Crucial P5, half a terabyte, M2, 2180. It has cache, it's NVMe, this thing's a beast. And that's going to be how to store your OS and quite a few games. Obviously, I do recommend you store slower needed files and legacy games on a different drive, but that's completely up to you. I think for the price, this thing's this thing's a steal. On the video card side, this is hard on the GPU. Your mileage may vary on what you want or how future-proof you want to go. I think this is really good value for money, the 4060 Ti, because obviously we can keep putting it up 100. It's, it's easy just to keep putting it up 100, but um, I think this being 16 gig fast ram fast this is a fast card this is great for sim racing case wise completely subjective i like something dark stealthy tempered glass so i can see inside and has airflow on the front and this ticked all my boxes 59 quid brilliant power supply 
went with a trusted brand, 850 watts. That gives us plenty of headroom and lets us to upgrade our PC in the future. 80 Gold Plus certified. The only thing in S you've got to do is monitors, but that will be a different video com completely. And oper operating system, just load up Windows 11 is definitely the go-to now. But yeah, any questions down in the comments? I hope you enjoyed this style video. Obviously, you're all going to have your different requirements. We went team blue and team green. Under 1,200 quid. I think we met the goal. It's a good build. But yeah, any questions down in the comments? If you liked the video, smash the like button. Sub to see the next one. Other than that, thank you very much. Catch you later.